please put your hands together for his own keynote address talking on driving humanitarian innovation with save the children ladies and gentlemen i want you to put your hands together as we bring up on stage a tory rossetti thank you it's great to be here in ghana with all of you i'm atore rossetti the presentation is going to be entitled Hoddle Hope for Children and How Bitcoin Can Do That. By show of hands, how many of you have heard of Save the Children before? Okay, some, not many. So hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about Save the Children today based on this presentation. So this is a slide, a little bit about me. I'm an identical twin, as you can see in the pictures. Now, I'm the better looking one with the stash, but we have combined our passions for giving back and the sport of tennis, setting three Guinness World Records for Save the Children. And one of them, thank you, two of them were in tennis, one of them was in pickleball. Now, the longest rally record in tennis lasted 14 hours and 31 minutes, hitting the same tennis ball back and forth without missing. No bio breaks, no water, no food for 14 hours and 31 minutes. And during that experience, I learned an important insight. And that is that you can be sympathetic for children who may not have enough to eat, but you cannot be empathetic unless you have a little bit of experience of what they're going through. So in that moment of slight hunger pain and dehydration, I had that insight. And my two kids, Adam and Jasmine, who I hugged afterwards, I have vicariously lived the mission of Save the Children to my, through my two kids, who have survived past the treacherous age of five in the developing world, and now are thriving teenagers. Save the Children was founded under the premise that all children have human rights. They have the right to an education, to be healthy, to be nourished, and to live to become adults. Eglatine Jeb founded Save the Children 104 years ago in London, in Trafalgar Square, she was protesting the blockade, which was causing children to starve to death. And her and her sister, Dorothy Buxton, were arrested for that belief by doing a public protest. And when they appeared in front of the judge, she said, all children deserve human rights in a time when women did not have equal rights. That was a bold pioneering statement, and she in fact, was found guilty as charged, but the prosecutor was so moved by her testimony that he said, I will pay your fine. Who do I make it out to? And she said, the Save the Children Fund. And that's how Save the Children was formed more than 100 years ago. And you see her arrest record below, and in the upper right, she wrote the very first human rights document for children called the Declaration of the Rights of the Child, which was ratified at the Geneva Convention in 1924, and then subsequently adopted by the UN as the child's rights document that's the most ratified human rights treaty in the world with 195 countries signing on to it. That is the legacy in history of our founder, Eglatine Jeb, and Save the Children. We also demonstrated her pioneering spirit by being the very first INGO to accept a Bitcoin donation 10 years ago in 2013. And the story was this. On the eve of the American Thanksgiving holiday, I got a phone call, and it was a Bitcoin donor. And she said, I want to donate, and our community wants to donate Bitcoin to save the children. Do you accept Bitcoin? And I said, let me get back to you in a couple of hours. So I ran to our legal department. I mean, that's sort of figurative, but I did walk briskly. And I said, is Bitcoin legal in the US? 
And the lawyer says, well, it's not legal tender, but it's technically intangible property as classified by the IRS. So, well, we take stocks, right? Yes. So we can take Bitcoin, right? Sure. Great. Got the legal approval. Then I went to the communications department and they said, all right, yeah, but we hear some bad things about Bitcoin, like people use it for illicit purchases. And I said, yeah, but a lot of people use cash for bad things and we accept cash, right? They go, well, yeah, I guess we do. All right, well, if you have some reactive Q&As of why we accept Bitcoin, that should suffice. Great. Then I went to the finance department and they said, do we have a mechanism for accepting Bitcoin? Well, no, but one of our policy requirements is that we receipt every donor. We don't have a mechanism to receipt Bitcoin donors. I said, well, what if I email a personal receipt to every single Bitcoin donor? Would that suffice? They said, yes. And that's the story of how Save the Children accepted the very first Bitcoin donation on Bitcoin Black Friday 10 years ago. So the true innovative and pioneering spirit, just like our founder, Eglatin Jeb. And it was for a humanitarian response, Typhoon Haiyan that hit the Philippines. But in that last decade, the world is worse for children, not better, because of the three C's, COVID, climate, and conflict. This slide shows you the number of children that are refugees, according to UNHCR. So 40% of the 108 million people who are refugees are children. 43 million children are refugees. If all of those children lived in one country, it would be the 36th most populous country between Iraq and Afghanistan. In fact, more children are refugees that live in the country of Ghana. What are we gonna do about that? Well, I have a story. I've met some of those refugee children when I visited our programs in Lebanon. And when I went there, it was a refugee setting, and there were white tents amid the chaos which are child-friendly spaces. And inside these white tents, on the outside, it had the big Save the Children logo, which is a metaphor for protecting children, right? And this metaphor inside, it was a happy place. Kids were playing and laughing and coloring, and it was colorful. And then I went to this middle school, and this is where this photo was taken. I take this panoramic photo of all the children in the room. And our host said, why don't you tell everyone your name, your age, and your job? And we'll go around the room and say the same thing. And I thought that was a puzzling question because these were kids between age 8 and 12. So I said, well, my name is Ettore, and I'm older than you, and I work for Save the Children. And then they went to the first girl, and she stood up meekly and said, my name is Yasmin, and I'm 8 years old, and... I pick vegetables in the field, getting up at 4 a.m. and work for 10 hours so I can make a day wage for my family. And they went from one child to the next and the next, and these were the stories. By the end, the mood was somber like it is now. And I was speechless and heartbroken, almost crying, thinking, how can I lighten the mood in the room from this heavy topic. So I did the only thing I could think of as a dad and as a professional. I took out Snapchat and did filters with the kids and they started laughing and they had a moment of joy. And it occurred to me is how is it that these children are not working in the fields and not working in the factories? is because Save the Children has a cash and voucher assistance program where we give cash to families in need, typically the head of household, the mother, and she knows best how to support her family. So that cash and voucher assistance program is done with fiat currency. So I thought, what if we were able to digitize our cash and voucher assistance and give people Bitcoin? That could solve the problem. That could keep kids out of the workforce and at the home, in school where they should be learning or playing. So 
That's the what if. What if we could create a future where children from birth through age 18 were guaranteed access and delivery of basic human rights by harnessing the power of Bitcoin, realizing the dream of our founder, Eglatine Jeb. So we created a campaign. It was a Bitcoin fundraising campaign. You could also donate other crypto. And we gamified it. We said, we're going to create a friendly competition. So on the left, you see a leaderboard of the top communities that gave. And on the right, you see the top coins. Now, I'm proud to say that Bitcoin's in number two spot, but they're not number one. Ethereum was number one. So we need a little help there. Later on in the presentation, you'll see a QR code if you want to donate some sats to the campaign. Our goal is to get to $10 million of fiat value. We're 76% of the way there. And in exchange for those donations next year, we're going to create an NTT, a non-transferable token, which will have a picture, a portrait of our founder on the front and on the back, a picture of the Declaration of the Rights of the Child. And we're going to give that as a literal and figurative token of appreciation to all of our supporters. So what if beyond fundraising in an innovative way, we could transform our program delivery on the blockchain and use digital cash transfers in the form of Bitcoin in a mobile wallet and in an app. We're in discussions with Fetty here to do that very thing. So imagine if we could teach the next generation of youth who have mobile phones that they could be empowered with financial inclusion so they don't have to be in the fields or in the factory working for a wage and being denied their future. That is the promise and the vision of our use case of Bitcoin in the humanitarian sector. But we cannot do it alone. We need partners like you to help make that vision a reality. Save the Children is often told that our aims are impossible, that there has always been child suffering, and there always will be. But we believe that anything is possible if you put your mind to it and work with others who share your belief. So in fact, it's only impossible if we, refu if we make it so, it's only impossible if we uh, refuse to attempt it. Thank you very much for your time. And if you'd like to support the campaign, here's a QR code where you can support it. The hashtag we're using is HODLHOPE. And we